everyone, and welcome back to Jesse Heck Creative. We are back at Collecticon this year, 2023. Let's a go. Eric Stewart, but before we do that, I need all of you guys to stand up. All of you guys to stand up. All of y'all. All of you have to stand up. So when I say it's time to, I want you guys to say duel, okay? It's time to... Duel! Guys, that's pretty weak. I, 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 need it, I need it louder. One, two, three. It's time to... Duel! There we go. There we go. Let's go ahead and give a round of applause to Eric Stewart and Dan Green. <laughs> You're looking good, Caleb. Thanks, dude. How's it going? Pretty good. What's up? All right. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Right um, into it. Because of where the schedule is kind of wonky right now. We're what? Gonna what? Things schedule? are disorganized. So there was a schedule. Yeah, but we're gonna make it. We're gonna have to speed run it because um, the, these guys need to get back to their booths and sign more of their. Fan items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, we're going to fully enjoy our time together for the moment. And we'll leave a little bit of time for questions, because I know some of you guys do have questions. So, uh, Eric and Dan, how are things going? They're good. It's good to see you again, and it's good to be back at Collecticon. You guys Long having a good beach. time? Yeah! All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I know that last time we talked, most of you guys don't know, we talked about the Heart of the Cards podcast. The Heart of the Cards podcast is something that we've been doing for a little over a year now. That's right. It, it actually started while we were here last year. That's right. That's yeah. right. And it's a conversation about creativity and inspiration, dealing with what you don't. Things that we can all relate to. When we talk about creativity, we're not talking only about writing a play or doing a dance or making a sculpture or painting or acting in a show. You create your life every day. We all create every day. And we deal with the de with the handwork dealt. We know that phrase, right? Yeah, something about cards? I think so. <laughs> More than cards we just signed. So, The Heart of the Cards is a podcast that drops every Tuesday. You can find it at Andromeda Productions on YouTube. We also are available on Spotify and other uh, podcast providers. But, you know, if you want to hear us talk about things that anybody can relate to. Has anybody ever heard of The Hero's Journey? Anybody ever hear of that, Hero's Journey? Yeah. So our first several episodes use that as a way to talk about these things that we all encounter. Like one of the first things is called the call to adventure. You might guess what that means. But it's like what inspires you to pursue a certain path. There's also a part that talks about the trials, the difficulties getting from here to there. Or those moments where you feel that you're at the height of your powers and you are doing awesome. Don't be, don't be shy. We all feel that way from time to time. But anyway, that's just part of the conversation we're having. We also have guests like Veronica Taylor, Eric Schroeder, Darren Dunstan. Um, so he's, yeah, he's actually dropping his uh, part two episode next week. So anyway, join the conversation. It's a good one. Yeah, and so I know a lot of you guys know us as, as rivals, as, you know, as, uh, uh, you know, we butt heads while we're, in the characters we play. But Dan and I are actually really good friends. And so a lot of times you guys will ask us, how did you get into the business? Uh, you know, I, I'm interested in creative things. What should I do? And what Dan yeah, and I yeah. do is we talk about life and our our, our own journeys yep. in creativity. We don't and, presume to know better. And you might find that, oh, I only thought you could get there in this one path. And you hear my version of how I got to where I am. And you hear his version. You're like, wow, those two guys are both guys I know as voice actors, but their their journey was completely different. So that might give you some guidance of, oh wait, maybe I can do this. Um, and and in, our, in, in our conversations, one of my big things is, my least two favorite words in your pursuit in life are what if, okay? And not to try to be some sort of like, you know, motivational speaker, but honestly, I'm an old man, so I'm gonna give you some wisdom. Is that in your journey of life, the worst two things you could say at the end are what if, I had done the, this thing, or I had tried that other thing. Because the worst thing that can happen is, you just gotta go back to the other thing you're doing, right? You know, take a step out of that safety zone and just pursue it. That is the difference between those that either succeeded in, in, their, in their passions or don't, is that they got up to try. And it's not about making the money, Sorry. doing your love. Someone was saying to me the other day, I'm trying to figure out what creative thing I could do that also will I can make money doing. And I said, well, how about this? 
How about look at all the things that you do that are creative and decide what's the thing that is your soul? That it doesn't matter whether you make money doing it, but you just have to do it because it, it fulfills something in you. And say, don't put the pressure on the money for that. And pick something else that might be the thing that could be your job. Like don't, yeah. hijacking cars. Well, maybe not. Hey. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, you know, I'm a musician in my soul. My job is voice acting. I love it. It's a passion. But it, I don't put the pressure on my music. So if, if you listen to what we talk about and the people that we have on, maybe that will give you some sort of inspiration. Maybe it will also give you some sort of, oh, reality to what this is. You will hear people tell you there are too many actors, there are too many writers, there are too many artists. You know, it's too competitive, don't even try it. But right. if everyone listened to that advice, we would have no actors and, 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 and artists and writers. Yeah. Because everyone would be so intimidated by it. So anyway, that's yeah, what we yeah. talk about. That's what we're doing. Right. You got a lot of good things to say for an old guy. Right, and I think you guys, I think you said something pretty interesting right there. So I know in Kansas City, I, I was talking to Dan Green about like the performance of the podcast, how it's doing, is it yeah, gaining yeah. a lot of traction. Dan's like, we just do this for fun, you know? It's a yeah, we do. Fun. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we yeah. enjoy doing it. I mean, we do have followers. Right, We're right. getting more. It's, it's building. And we get lots of good feedback. I love it when uh, one of the people who comes up at the table has said, I, I, I'm following and I got this out of the show or that out of the show. That's great to hear. But we also, yeah, we're getting something out of it too. And right. we learn things about it. Like, you know, we're friends and we've been friends for a long, long time. Yeah. But even when we bring on like someone that is also a mutual friend, yeah. we discover new things about them, about their journey. You know, I mean, if you simply just want some hot goss about us or any of our, you know, there's a lot of that too. <laughs> yeah, Caleb, Caleb here has a lot of hot goss about a lot yeah, of yeah, stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it is pretty interesting whenever you guys talk about this stuff because it's always leading with passion first. And then sure. everything else kind of follows suit. So, I mean, often at times, like, a lot of us young folk, we, we go do our passions, but then it's like, man, I'm not, like, getting this. When is this right. going to actually oh, happen? Sure, sure. So what do you guys have to say about that? That's a, okay, so there's, I think, this misconception. When you, when you see somebody who has succeeded at something that you admire, you might walk away with the understanding that, well, they're just great, they got it, they did it, boom. Every success is preceded by series of failures beforehand. You might have heard, you know, failing your way to success. There's truth in that. And it's not like everything we've attempted, we've, you know, done and achieved to the greatest, of, you know, that we've ever imagined. No. But the true failure is not trying, right? The true failure is giving up. The true failure is not giving yourself a chance to succeed. I know this sounds like motivational BS, but it's actually true, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you find you find degrees of success. I've been working on doing these illustrations for the show Crossing the Gods, which we created and I wrote and, and, and directed. We have a great cast. We recorded the whole thing years ago, but because I'm doing all the imagery, uh, it's taken me a long time to get there. And just recently, I finally found a way of, of handling the backgrounds. Not, not even just drawing the main characters, but the backgrounds that I just wasn't satisfied with what I was doing before. It's taken me years, but I am so much happier with what I have now than what I was settling for later, and I'm so glad that I didn't release what I was not so happy with and waited until I got to a better place for a better result, which will be better for you as well. And, and probably most of you did not know that Dan was also a very talented graphic yeah. artist. Very I mean, you probably didn't know that, right? So he's hand-drawing this series that we're, de that we're developing. Okay, um, which stars a lot of the voice actor people that you guys grew up with, people that worked on Pokemon and people who worked on Yu-Gi-Oh and many other shows, not doing anime. It's an original idea that he wrote. So, you know, yes, he's here, and I'm going to talk about him because I'm very proud of what he's what he's accomplished and what we have accomplished as a as a team. But you know, he wrote the show, he directed the show, and he's hand drawing the show. You probably wouldn't know that because you might think that we only do the one thing you know is, which is, of course, we're very flattered that you still Absolutely. enjoy our performances Absolutely. as voice actors and the characters we played. I mean, being at these events, it's, it's very humbling that there's a fandom for it. Um, this is not what we signed up for when we decided to follow that passion of acting. That's right. So this is a bonus, and, and we, are, we, are, we are so happy that we're part of this. But hopefully you guys will also do your own thing. Like, I find joy in people following their passion. How many people here are artists? Raise your hand. Yeah. How yeah. about, uh, who's a writer? Okay. Does anybody do any music? 
There uh, you go. Right. So here, here's an interesting thing. You just showed me three or four production companies that are all here in the same room. If you guys actually spoke to each other, you probably would have things that you had in common, great ideas that you could share. Hey, I'm not a graphic artist, right? Okay, I know what I know how to direct, I know how to do voice acting, but I need somebody that can do that and also understand those things too. So you 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 borrow from each other's, you know, I my weakness is strength. You have teams right here. That's true. And we're all in an environment that we love, right? We're all nerdy, geeky guys here. That, I mean, I'm a gamer geek. I fit in. This is our world. He's a huge gamer geek. I'm a huge gamer geek. He does it to perfection, <laughs> like everything else he puts But also, so, you know, some of you raise your hand about the musician or the artist or what have you. How many people here like watching good storytelling? I do. And you're the other most important part. Yeah. We would be nowhere without an audience. You guys might think that we're the special ones here because we have our, you know, we sign things, we have our pictures up. We're nowhere without you guys, right? So it's all a wonderful circle of life or yeah, yeah, whatever it is, but it all works together. Cool. Yep. I think that's You guys want to ask us some questions before yeah. we go back to our table? Yeah, so what we'll do is that we have about 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, where we can actually do Q&As. So what you guys can do is slowly and calmly form a single file line behind the mic. Slowly. Slowly. Very little fist fighting, please. Exactly. And uh, feel Cage free to say your name for and questions. <laughs> That's our next show. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. Hey, was, I, I got a question for you, Dan Green. Um, you it. It's a bit of a stupid question, but... Uh, oh, I'm a stupid guy. I'm right in line. <laughs> Alright, I talked to Jason about a month ago, and I, I forgot to ask, uh, I forgot to ask Jason this, so I want to ask you instead. Jason... Griffin. Okay. Yeah, Griffin, yeah. Great guy, by the way. So good. Yeah. Hell yeah. Love that guy. I wanted to ask, do you remember that time when you sang the national anthem? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think maybe you can sing the national anthem for us? Well, I, I probably could, but I'd have to ask which character do you want? Knuckles, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I won't sing at all, all right? All right. And you gotta course. join in, okay? Of course. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? <laughs> yeah! Thank you! Thank you! You're great! Oh, right back at you, man. Hey. It's uh, so great to meet both of you. Thank Thanks, you. buddy. I just want to ask you guys, does Knuckles have what it takes to defeat Blue Eyes White Dragon? Ooh, a little song. crossover! Oh. Boom, boom, boom! Maybe Knuckles. Well, <laughs> as mighty as the Blue Eyes White Dragon is, I wouldn't bet my money on him. What does Knuckles even use? His knuckles? No. Well, sort of. But his fists are his weapon of choice. And the Master Emerald. And the Master Emerald doesn't hurt either. I, I, I can't answer that. <laughs> yeah. You got it, buddy. Hi, guys. Hey, what's Hello. up? I have a question for both of you. Regarding Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. if you guys could drop the I've heard of that show. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys could drop the F-bomb in one of the lines, oh, yeah. what would you think? I'll let you go first. I fly with my blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the F he was looking for. I'm not cursing from the stage. I work on family friendly shows. I'm not going to, yeah, maybe I'll curse in the car when I'm driving, but not, not, when I, not on the stage. I am the Pharaoh attempt. Oh, that's, an F sound. that's not an F either. That's a, yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose it might be fun to hear a version of the opening of the show where you say, it's time to effing duel, you know? Thank you so much. I don't think the WB would have allowed that. <laughs> you got it. Nice shirt. Hi, guys. Uh, this one's for Eric. Hey. So, uh, seeing that you voice. Uh, that Whoa. Boom! Uh, See, they I said no voice. I lost tonight! <laughs> uh, 
seeing as you voice multiple characters in Pokemon, yeah. if all of those characters are in the scene together and you have to voice all of them, do you go back and forth with the voices or do you do takes with each character? That's a really good question. So um, with a show like that where we're doing ADR and we're matching lip flaps, the animation is already done in advance rather than a prelay show where we would record the voices first and the animators would draw to what we were doing. Um, I would dub each character individually. So I would do my James stuff and then my Brock stuff. But there's a great episode, because I'm also Butch from team, the other team, uh, uh, Team Magma, right there, called Butch and Cassidy, right? So there's an, there's an argument between Butch, James, and Brock. All right, and I did all three individually. And after that session, I asked the, uh, the producer, I said, hey, I really think we should change the name of this particular episode to Eric Stewart featuring Pokemon. <laughs> well deserved. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good how are you? Man. I have a question for both of you guys. Um, how yeah. fun is it doing like uh, like written written boardings like those things like like uh, that written boarding versus Yu Gi Oh written boarding versus like, Kaiba? I see. Uh, oh, this is a really important thing that you're asking because this is an example of somebody stealing our voices that was done without consent or compensation using AI to make us say things we never yep. agreed to say. Yep. So I think it absolutely sucks. Yep. I don't care about how funny it is. It is ethically inappropriate. It is a threat to creativity and it is a huge, the offensive thing to do to anybody who makes their living using their creativity and their voice. Yep. Well said. But, yeah, because you should not be fooled by what you hear. I would never say the things that they make me say, right? Right. You know, we, we could all get in a lot of trouble for stuff like that. You could get canceled for something that you never even said. Yeah. Right? You guys know me now. You've met me. You, I even just said I wouldn't even curse from the stage. So you hear things like that that are online. You just be like, that's not him. And I've had people think that I actually did yeah, that. That's right. I have to correct them. Yep. It's scary. But good question. Thank you. Thank well you. said, Dan. No, yeah, first off, AI is going to be the end of us all. We yep. have to end I, it. Yeah. Well, we got to be careful. But we got to yeah, be yeah, real, yeah. real careful of that stuff. Yeah. Um, outside of all these really nice questions, I actually have a question that goes back to the voice acting. By the way, my name is Jalen. I'm a big fan. Oh, thanks, thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Nice. All right. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, um, you say that voice acting is... You don't do it for the money, you do it for the passion, which is admirable. I respect the hell out of that. But, <laughs> but the thing about voice acting is that it's a very unreliable career, at least from what I've been told. Any artistic path is unreliable as a career. Mm -hmm. right. So I guess my question is, how do you keep the motivation yeah. to keep on going yeah. when it seems like the odds are constantly against you? Gotcha, right, right. You want to do this? You want me to do this? Um, I'll do a quick version. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what I was saying is music is the thing that is my passion. Voice acting is my job, but it's not steady. It's not steady in one category. So anything that involves the voice, I do, right? I do industrial narrations for companies that it's not, it's not an, I do training videos for a big car company that, you know, unless you work for that car company, you're not gonna hear them, right? I, I do audiobooks. I'll do um, phone prompts, like please press one to, to reach an operator. Anything that involves the voice, not just the fun stuff of the cartoons. So it's, it's like the shotgun approach. You're basically like, I just put it out there and hopefully something is gonna, yeah, I'm gonna hit something, right? It's not a steady gig, but like any gig, if you're working and you're networking and you're trying, there's a chance that you fall into one of these categories that involve the voice that might keep you a little bit busy. Now there's people that have a job and also pursue acting, right? Most of my friends that are actors have had a background in being in the service industry and working in, as a restaur in a restaurant, as a waiter or, or something like that, right? No, no a, shame in that. You know, a flexible schedule giving you opportunities to go on auditions and things like that because you could switch a shift with someone, right? Great, there's nothing wrong with that because yes, it is a roller coaster ride. But like any art, even if you're using that as business, I said short, I'm sorry. That's um, okay. I but, if, you. but if you're but if you're if you're if you're following that and you work hard at doing that, hopefully yeah. you'll also find some joy in even just getting up to bat. Right. 
And you know, you might have heard there's a uh, strike going on right now, an actor's strike, right. writer's strike. Oh, no. Yo, no, seriously, it's even in this city. Really? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, wow. And um, one percent of the SAG members, this is the acting guild, actually make their full living off of yeah. acting. Ninety-nine percent of them don't support themselves on it. No, right? So, that. so yeah. that's reality, pal. And I was lucky enough when I started my acting training. I was very, very young, right? And I was so fortunate that one of the teachers said, if you want to make money, don't pursue acting, right? You should not expect that. Yes, that can happen, but don't expect that. Another person would tell you, whatever the creative path may be, whether it's writing or painting or poetry or whatever, if you can do anything else with your life, do that. But you do it because you must, right? And creativity is its own reward. If you are in a position where you are eventually making money, yes, know your worth, yes, get representation, yes, fight for everything you can in your contract, absolutely. But you should not expect yourself to necessarily be able to buy a mansion by singing a song, right? Yeah. yeah. But and that doesn't make the song less beautiful. That doesn't make your creativity less relevant. And if you listen to our conversations that we've had on our show, so I've had day jobs. I've run recording yeah, studios. Yeah. I was a, I was a tennis pro. I, I cleaned pools. I worked in uh, you know I, I, I worked in a plant nursery. I always found a job that paid my rent while I pursued the things that I love. So there's a balance. That's you right. can still have a balance. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be both. That's right. But you've got to not put the pressure on the art. And it's a blend of things. It's not like once you get successful, you'll always stay that way. I mean, you know, monetarily. So just understand. Yeah. It, it, and it's and honestly, thing. if that's your passion and that you want to be an actor, you want to be a voice actor, then please try it. This is the what if thing. How miserable would you be if you never gave yourself a chance? Right? How many people would miss out on the beauty you have to offer? Yeah. All right? That's tremendous advice. Thank you guys so much. And have a blessed day. You Good too. Luck. Good luck. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. Um, so it is 3.30. Oh, 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 all right. Let's, let's get let's, these four. Let's do more. We got four. Yeah, let's quickly. Hi, hey, hey, Hi. hey, Brooke, how you doing? Doing good. So going back into the voice acting and stuff, yeah. Yeah. how many hours do you guys have to practice um, voice acting? And also, does it sometimes take a strain out of your voice? Especially you, Dan, whenever you say, Exodia, open around! <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to come in and sub for me when I need it, all right? <laughs> so, um, I, th I think, you know, whenever you're pursuing a creative uh, uh, discipline of any kind, uh, it's really hard to count the hours that you're working on. And because some of it is active performance, a lot of it is uh, working on inside of you before you get to that performance. So, you know, it, it's really hard to say, uh, but I would say in general, you want to learn. I was saying this earlier, there's talent and skill. Can't teach talent, can teach skill. And you are going to compete with people who have both and experience and connections. So if you want to compete, you have to understand what the playing field is, right? I don't say that to discourage anyone, quite the opposite. That's just what that's about. So work at it, right? And you will be, and you will be engaged and rewarded by just seeing yourself progress, right? That's exciting, whether or not you have an audience cheering you on. Yes. Thank you both so much. You have got a it. Day. You too. Thank you. Somebody want to lower that mic, please? Just jump up for each word. <laughs> Thank you. My name is. There you go. Uh, what do you like more, uh, you yo or knuckles? <laughs> That is so hard for me to answer. Um, but okay, I've been asked this kind of question before. I am so fortunate to have been a part of shows that have been well received. And I, I really am blown away by that. But when you're an actor, you're supposed to love every character that you portray, even if they're villains, right? Because you have to do your good job being who they are. When it comes to Knuckles or Yu-Gi-Oh, I break it down like this. If it hadn't been for Yu-Gi-Oh, I wouldn't have met some of the best people in my life ever. Which includes, I wouldn't have met the woman that I married. I wouldn't have the children that I have today. So, I gotta give it up to you, Ian. Good answer. Question. Somebody raise that mic now. Somebody dance a jig. This is for Dad. All right. That's the most iconic. Most iconic quote. 
That's interesting because I, again, when I was doing this stuff, I was just trying not to get fired. So uh, I wasn't thinking like anything would become iconic. What I've learned is that it is from you guys. And what I think some of the, the, the iconic moments, as I understand it, um, are shut up and are you crazy? So those are memes. Um, but Knuckles, I'm a comic book guy. So for me, Knuckles is kind of like the Wolverine of that group. You know what I mean? He's a dangerous good guy. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Good question. Thank you, very much. you got it, buddy. Last question. Uh, do you remember that one PSA where Yugi says that smoking marijuana cannot improve his game? Yes. Uh, I, yes, I think I've also seen that float around on YouTube. So I, I do not want to disagree with Yugi. So, I, and I also, I'm not good at playing the game. So I, I, I would say trust that advice. I certainly wouldn't suggest getting high if you're gonna try to compete at a YCS. Though Kaiba Corp has just opened a bunch of dispensaries. <laughs> do you think opium is a tradi uh, Egyptian tradition that you might have done to be creationally or to improve the Wait, game? Wait, haven't you seen his hair? <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> um, I would never condone uh, the, the abuse of any substance that would destroy you. No. Good questions. Thank you. You got it. All right, this All is, right, this is the it. last question. No pressure. So, um, I was wondering, like, I guess it didn't have, like, a little ago, but what's it like, like, uh, during certain times, like, the popular like, there's, like, the exhibition, and then there's, like, a Right, right, right. So your question is, what's it like hearing those back? Yeah, because those are like popular lines, also a remix of over two, which tends to overlap with me. So for me, it's like being part of something that people are having fun with. I don't, I don't take any personal responsibility for it. Any, any good actor will tell you that they're only part of the performance that you see and attribute to them. There has to be the writing. There has to be the direction. There has to be the creation of the characters. We're a very important part, but we are a part, right? And so if it's caught on in a certain way, I think it's fun, but I don't go like, ha ha, only I could have created that meme. No, 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 no. And it is funny what lines become favorites. And it really is. I mean, you know, I'll just use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan as the yeah, Shakespeare yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, who, who, who would have known? But yeah, I mean, it's great that you there's guys also, know that. There's thing. something about a third-rate duelist that you like to call Yeah, the third-rate duelist one. I mean, yeah, too. Like, yeah, you know, it's great. But we, we really enjoy when you guys know that stuff. And, and, yeah. yeah, and some quotes I think you can live by. Again, I, I mentioned I'm a comic book fan. Like, with great power comes great responsibility. That's just the truth. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's but another tough. one, as a, close, as a closing thought, as we are over time, believe in yourself and you will always prevail. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessieheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned.